Hi, once again, welcome to my chat. This is episode number 807. Yes, quite a few of these. The topic today is about this thing about time heals or wounds, because that, frankly, is baloney. I'm being nice. Actually, time numbs or wounds, and I'll explain that in more detail and I'll give you some solutions and some explanations in a moment. So before I do that, let me introduce myself and let you know what it's all about. My name is Barry Selby. I am the author of the best-selling book, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, a book for men and women, couples and singles, a powerful transformational book, if I do so so myself. I'm also an inspirational speaker and relationship and love expert helping women create balance in love, life and business. I'm also a passionate champion of the Divine Feminine, which informs my work and also what created these talks in the first place over two and a half years ago now, called Messages from the Masculine Inspiring a Feminine Heart. Which brings us to today's episode, which is number 807. And the topic today is um, provocative, perhaps, a simple reminder in other places, and a curative step for those who don't know. So the topic today is basically time heals all wounds as a question because I don't believe it's true. In fact, I know from experience that time tends to numb all wounds, doesn't always heal them. So what to do instead? So let me explain this in more detail and then I'll give you some solutions. You can actually get something to do with this because I like to provide some sort of insight, next steps and um, solutions in my talks. So stay tuned. And by the way, if you're watching this live, that means you're watching me on Facebook live. If you're watching it in replay, it could be on YouTube or on Facebook and I'll give you the replays of those links where to find them and also how to join me live at the end of the broadcast. So stay tuned for that as well. And probably gonna have a couple of links showing up before I finish this broadcast as well. We'll see what happens. So first of all, there is the old adage you may have heard, I'm sure it's been around our culture forever, which is time heals all wounds. Frankly, I believe that that quote, that declaration, that motto was declared around physical injuries, not around the emotional ones. And that's the difference here. This is, this is the duality or the, the split, so to speak. When people think, oh, time heals all wounds, you go, well, that's just my emotions are gonna heal with time and it'll be fine especially after a bad breakup. And it's not true, I'm sorry to say this. You may think it's healed, which is why I talk about how time numbs all wounds, because that's what it does. Yes, physically speaking, when you have an injury, you know, I mean, I, 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 I felt like I came up on my bicycle two weeks ago, three, three weeks ago now, and I smashed, I didn't smash up, but I scraped my knee on the tarmac, you know, bicycles. I mean, it felt like a five-year-old again, but I happened on a bicycle. Well, by now it's almost healed. A little bit of dry skin, it's, it's almost healed. That's what happens. Physically, especially when it's non-permanent injuries, like you didn't break a bone, although with, with care that can heal too, time does heal all wounds. So, sorry, I reposition myself on the, on the couch. So, if you cut your skin, if you graze yourself, if you break a bone and it's set pro properly, with time it will heal. I'm, I think I'm making my point clear. Physically speaking, time does heal all wounds. But that's not what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about emotions. And in particular, I'm talking about those painful emotions that happen when you are broken up with, when you have a bad experience in a relationship, when you've been hurt or wounded by a past partner, whether it's abuse, rape, assault, other ten physical stuff. Yes, yeah, physical stuff too, but it's emotional carnage or emotional, as a heavy word, emotional damage, so to speak, that's happening. So if you've gone through a bad relationship breakup and you're feeling wounded and hurt, you think that time will solve that. It will numb it, as I mentioned, but it won't heal it. And this is the problem with this assumption, is that what happens when you numb it is it doesn't go away, obviously. It also doesn't heal. I think you get my point. What happens, though, is you're going to have this um, numbed and suppressed, because that's what happens. It goes below the surface because you're now moving on to new things, new experiences, new life, new relationships. This is where the problem happens. You're in the new relationship, everything's going great, but that piece of buried pain, wounding, hurt, feelings that are inside, is tied energetically, almost like a resonant frequency with your new relationship. When you're in that new relationship and you start bringing the walls down, you start getting closer, more intimate, more loving with that person, you start stripping away all the stuff that's been protecting that wound. Your partner may not be the cause of it, but your partner may be the victim of that wound. Meaning that if you're in a relationship with somebody new, and you're still, and you haven't healed, let me be clear about that, you haven't healed that wound from the past relationship that was so painful, traumatic, and upsetting, that pain that's inside will get vented and voiced to your new partner in enough, with enough time taken by, because it's about how you become more intimate, more connected, more vulnerable, more open. That may take three weeks, it may take three days, it may take three years. 
But at some point in time, your vulnerability will reveal that wound inside that didn't get healed in the first place. And your partner will be the person who's almost like an innocent bystander. They will basically be collateral damage for your upset coming out. Now, some people have the romantic notion, which I understand can be true, is that, well, when I get in love with a new partner, they'll heal all my wounds, they'll be the safe place for me to vent, and I'll be wonderful. Yes and no. I won't say that's not possible. It is possible with the right partner. The key phrase being right partner. But for many people, they don't know how to deal with their own stuff. So how the hell are they going to deal with your stuff? Having a partner you can be safe with means they've got to be safe with themselves. And most people, I'm sorry to say, are not truly safe in their own wounds, their own heart, their own vulnerability. So when you have somebody where your wounds are coming up and they're not prepared to provide that safe space because they don't have the skill set for it, it's going to be painful. Speaking, painful energetically and physically and emotionally, but also painful in the disruption of that relationship. So my point here is very simple, is that it's advised, it's recommended, it's in your best interest to seek out professional help before you get into the next relationship. So you don't have to risk that partner falling apart because they can't handle your emotional upset. It sounds dramatic, and in a way it is, because this is about suppressed emotion that's been bottled up, and like a beach ball that's been held underwater, those emotions don't stay underwater for long. The amount of, the amount of pressure, buoyancy in that beach ball brings it up to the surface, and sometimes if you hold it down long enough, it will explode out to the surface, and your emotions can do the same thing. Now, I'm not saying it will do the same thing, but it, I'm just giving you parameters. It can do the same thing, just to be clear. I'm not saying this is the way everybody experiences it, but for most people, this stuff will happen. Because again, time did not heal that wound, it just numbed it, so you're not even aware it's there. So you're going along in life and you're single and happily looking at on dating apps, swiping and clicking on people. And you feel that life is going great, you don't feel any pain, you feel great, you meet somebody wonderful, all new, and it's all great. It's a great like three times there, excuse that. <laughs> That's the word that came up every time. But again, as time goes by in that new relationship, that's when the latent, hidden, suppressed, numbed out emotional baggage will become more active, more responsive, more reactive to what you've been going through. This is kind of an important thing to say this. is if you want to be prepared for your next relationship, ready, clear, free, and available, that stored emotion has to be released first. And I'm saying this from a compassionate place because many people are afraid of facing their upset, their wounds, their emotions. It's so interesting to witness this. When, when I work with my clients, just to be transparent, my comfort zone in holding space for them is pretty transcendent. Not because I'm special, but because of my background. Having had, what, 20 years as a spiritual counselor, having a master's degree in spiritual psychology, where for two years we practiced every single time how to be in the counselor chair safely. So to hold that space for my clients is second nature. So it doesn't matter how traumatic, how painful, how upset, how bad that is. Hi, Janie. Nice to see you my broadcast. Um, there's no limit to how much space I can hold. So I'm not saying I'm the one you should work with, but I am saying you need someone like that. Because if you're going to be going through this chance to reveal, heal, and transform those hidden emotions, those numbed emotions that have been buried from past breakups, past wounds, past traumas, Unless you find someone that can, you can trust with it, you know can hold the space for you. There may be more wounding on top of what you started with. This is another piece, by the way. When you find a therapist, counselor, coach, someone to work with, who promises they can hold the space for you and they can't, because a lot of them can't, just to be transparent, when your wounds come up to be dealt with and they are like the, expert, the person you were dating, same thing, they can't handle it, it's going to create more pain, more suffering, more wounding in you because you don't feel safe even more than you did before. So, hi, Janie, thank you for that. Hi, you're awesome, love your work, holy spaces, everything. Thank you, I appreciate that. And we are, we're, still, we're still gonna meet and do the talk we talked about, I know. So, and thank you for the feedback, I appreciate it. So I wanna make sure you get this point clear. I wanna make it simple, <laughs> as simple as it can be, considering how complicated this can be, but it is this basic. Those wounds you carry, those hurts, don't get healed by time. They don't get, they get numbed by time, Thank you so much. Thank you, Janie. Appreciate that. I do it beautifully. It's, it's years of practice and a lot of willingness and a lot of safety that has been held for me so I can hold it for other people. So thank you for that. So when, not if, when those wounds come up for healing, 
it isn't your partner's job to resolve them. As much as you may think that they'll be big enough and hard enough hold, and whole enough to help you with that, not recommended. It's possible, again, in the spectrum of available men you could date or any women you date, depending on which side of the fence you're on, there may be someone who's got that depth of soul, that depth of heart, that depth of space and safety to help you through any emotional experience. But to be honest, they're rare, they're far and few between, they're very rare, because most people haven't done the work, just to be clear about it. For example, in my graduate degree that I went through in my Institute of Psychology, there are about maybe three and a half thousand people who've gone through a program out of seven billion. That's not a lot of people. In my spiritual teaching as a spiritual counselor for the last 20 years, there's maybe a thousand, no, less than, less than that, less than a thousand people who've done that training too. So proportionally, with all the people out there who can do this work, there aren't that many. Now, yes, there are the teachings, there are the trainings, there are the retreats I know of. I can recommend them if you want to find out more about those. They're fairly big investment, they're a bigger time commitment, and they will transform your experience so you can be whole and healthy again. Which is why, that's why I believe my services are really useful. But if you want to get one-on-one -on -one support, one-on-one -on -one care, find someone you can trust that can hold the space for you. And yes, I'm volunteering myself for that role. Well, you've got to pay me, you don't get it for free. <laughs> Only really good friends get that. But my point is very simple on this, <laughs> is that the truth is this hidden, buried, numbed out emotions don't go away on their own. So don't go away on their own, let me try to say it clearly. To take the time to focus on your own healing before you get into another relationship is perhaps my biggest, best advice I can give you because frankly, to go into another relationship and to, um, so what I was looking for? That wasn't a good word, let's try another word. Um, inflict, <laughs> not a present word, but inflict your emotional upsets on your new partner when they didn't do anything to hurt you in the first place and hopefully never do hurt to you in the first place. It's not their job to fix it, it's not their job to resolve it, it's not their role, their responsibility, their commitment, excuse me, their commitment may be strong, but it's not their skill set. So again, when you're single, even though you might not feel the pain, maybe you've numbed it out, finding someone who can help you go beneath the numbness, to get beneath the pain, to get to the heart of what's really going on, to find the love back inside so you can heal and be resolved again, is the best choice you can make for yourself before you get into a relationship. So before you go swiping the dating apps, or you hit up the matchmakers, or you go to the dating, speed dating environment events, get personal one-on-one -on -one help when you're single. It's the smartest move you can make. And I'm being very blunt about that, because I've seen so many people I'll take one example, for example, one person in particular. I saw a friend of mine who didn't want support, was going to handle it herself, went into relationship after relationship, went through three, two, two different relationships. At the end of the second one, she was like, okay, I'm done. I can't do this anymore because she kept having the same thing show up again and again because it wasn't healing the wound. So I'm just using her bad experience to suggest you may have a better choice. So working on, hey Jermaine, so true on this is time does provide help, does provide helps in several ways, and yes, whoops, and, and yes, physically this can be spot on, however, with our emotions, hence as, as your side tag here, HR relates to, but HR relates to, but time I feel as well with emotions can help with learning education of emotions with the needed, and by one's choice that You've got so many abbreviations, so um, that's something emotions, whether through professional help, spiritual, etc., so you at least be fine or okay. I think I understood what you said there. I'll read it when I get up, when I sign off, because I'm trying to read this, and I'm like, it's it's complicated to read. But thank you for that feedback, Jermaine. I appreciate it. So here's the thing: whatever you do when you're single, if you are, I'm going to say this another way, because the truth is, if you're numb, you won't be aware of it. If you can look back at your past relationships and see the pain that was there, and you're not feeling it now it's quite likely it's numb. Not gone, just numb. If you look back at past relationships, there's nothing there energetically. You can see clearly and you're open enough to see it without um, avoiding parts of the relationship history you have, then you may be free. But either way, I recommend you get checked in. You get checked in. Excuse me. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not really going to get checked into the facility. I'm talking about checking in with yourself and maybe checking in with someone like myself. I do offer as a gift a complimentary clarity conversation for those people who want some direct help. That's a complimentary gift from me to you. It's a 30 minute chat where we can see what's going on and if there's a reason to go deeper, we can. But also it gives you some next steps and some guidance. So I'll put that link in the comments so you can check it out. 
it really is up to you to choose this. You will not heal your past wounds unless you choose to heal your past wounds. It's kind of obvious, I know. So putting the energy back in to focus on yourself, to resolve what's in the way so you can fully embrace and love yourself first, so then you can be more effective, more full, more available, more effective in a relationship too. The effective twice too. I'm not just going to do some repeat words in there. That's what's coming up. Then you have what you want. It's so challenging when you say that I want to have this amazing relationship with all those pictures and images, do your vision board and everything else, which I help people with too. But you haven't done the emotional work first. It's going to be very hard to get that until you heal this. I think I made my point clear. Do the work, heal your heart, become fully able to express yourself freely with no pain, no limits. It's like you've healed your broken arm, you've taken the splints off and your arm works fine again. You're working out, exercising, being healthy again. That's what I want to encourage you for your own emotional experience, your emotional well-being, and your availability to love again. That's right, helicopter gone over. Okay. I don't, know if, I don't know if the mic picks it up because I'm hearing quite loud from here. So anyway, so here's the thing. I do recommend my own services. I do recommend my own work. I recommend my, my services because it works. I've been through this journey. I know what it work, how it works and I can help you. So whatever you do choose to use, again, with seminars, books, teachings, retreats, self-guidance, or getting some help from myself, which I'm kind of biased about, as in yes, <laughs> I'll put some links in the comments for you to check out. I will set up put a link in the comment for, my, for a clarity conversation with me as a gift for me to you. Um, a thing I can recommend as well is start with self-love. I've, I've been talking this for ages because it's such a functional, functional and foundational piece of your own practice. Loving yourself, focusing on self-love is absolutely vital. Thank you again, Jermaine. Thank you. appreciate the love. Focusing on the love you have inside is where the healing really begins. It isn't up to somebody else, up to you. I've talked about that one many times before in my Facebook Lives. I'll give those links in a minute too. So I'll put a link in the comments for my self-love guided meditation. It's an investment that will change your life. So those two plus my book, because I did mention that at the beginning, will be in the comments. So three links in the comments later on so you can check them out. My book, my discovery session, or complimentary chat, com, it's a triple C. Complimentary clarity conversation, that's what it is. <laughs> and also my self-love practice will be in the comments. Um, with that, Oh, reminders. So if you haven't seen me before on Facebook Live, where have you been? This is number 807, as I mentioned. So I've been on there every day for, a couple, for over two years now. So here's the thing. You can watch me every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time. Either put a mark in your calendar or somewhere around this broadcast is a button you can tap on. I think it's three dots. When you click on be notified next time I go live, that way you can be ready to catch me next time I go live. Surprise, surprise. Because I will be back in tomorrow doing something else. That'll be episode 808. The replays you can watch. Sorry. Let me put this back up. If you're watching the replay, we can watch me live at 5 p.m. Pacific time. Is on my personal page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby. The replays go to my business page on Facebook, which is BarrySelby.Author, where you can watch any of my replays at any time you want. And also on my YouTube channel, which is much easier to search through, is on YouTube. The channel is Barry Selby, my name again. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. There's a playlist on there called Messages from the Masculine. So you can watch all the replays there. Um, but again, joining me live is more fun. You can interact with questions, Q&A, and stuff like that. I appreciate you being with me, with me as always. Again, three links will be in the comments. I invite you to check them out. One of them's for the ladies, and I'll, I'll mark which one it is. Um, but the rest is for everybody, men and women. And if you want to reach out for support and you're a guy, just message me over social media. I'm here to serve. I'm here to help. I'm here to guide. I'm here to help you heal. And I'm here to help you have success. That's my passion, my work, which is why I do Facebook Live every single day for over two years, which is why I'm at episode 807. Now you know why I do what I do. I thank you for watching. I will see you again tomorrow. Take care of yourself, please. My invitation, my encouragement, my insistence is you take care of yourself because who else is going to do it? It's not, it's not somebody else's job. It's your job. Take care of yourself first so you can then take care of others. I've talked about that before too. With that, I'll see you again tomorrow. Take care of yourself. I thank you for watching. Bye.